Kimberly Turner from cookingwithkimberly.com and today I'm going to show you how to cook a tiger nut crusted outside round roast of beef. Now I've got a beautiful five pounder here and this will serve comfortably probably five people I would say or three people twice <laughs> with leftovers. Uh, this is a gorgeous roast and I can't wait to show you how to do this. Today I'm using tiger nuts, and if you've never heard of tiger nuts before, they're not actually nuts at all. They're nut free. They are little tubers that grow under the ground, and that's what they look like. They look like little wrinkly chickpeas, or like uh, little nasturtium notes if, you've, if you're a gardener. Um, these are vegetarian, they're vegan, they're organic, non-GMO, they're Whole30, uh, raw food and paleo diet friendly. Um, they are cholesterol free, nut free, they're dairy free. They are wonderful, okay? So what I'm using today is the flour. Now, usually I will use an all-purpose flour and dredge my roast uh, before I start browning it on the stovetop, but a lot of people have problems with gluten in their diet, and that all-purpose flour obviously has gluten in it. So this is a gluten-free alternative for a holiday dinner. Um, so this is the flour. Basically, the flour is just these beautiful uh, tubers, and they're just ground up. Okay, the, the uh, skin and all. So that's what it looks like. It's a light, fluffy flour. Okay, let's prelude this. I'm preheating my oven on 325 degrees Fahrenheit. That's going to finish my cooking process after I've browned my meat. Now, on my stovetop, I have a large oven proof um, frying pan. Okay, or you can use a roasting pan if you want to and transfer it from your frying pan if it's not oven proof to a roasting pan to finish in the oven. But right here I've got this preheating on my stove top. It's going to eventually go on a high, high heat. Right now it's just on low heating. I am also using some Tiger Nuts oil. Make sure you check out my review on this and the flour and the um, actual Tiger Nuts themselves. This is a raw premium organic Tiger Nuts first press extra virgin oil. Now, if you want to combine oils to increase smoke point or whatever you want to do or whatever you're comfortable with, you could do that. I'm using just maybe two teaspoons of olive oil today and the rest I'm going to use maybe uh, two tablespoons or so of the Tiger Knot oil. You want to make sure that it has enough in there to be able to brown your beautiful roast once it's dredged. Okay, so that being said now, I have a large dish, okay, a dish that I can dredge my meat in. I have about a cup's worth of Tiger Nuts flour. Uh, it comes in a beautiful vacuum sealed bag if you grab the big one kilo um, portion from the website. And if you need a little bit more, I might just need just a little bit more to make sure I can dredge this whole roast. So just break up any um, lumps if there are any because this was vacuum sealed and it was nice, tightly packed. That ensures freshness. Very simple with my roasts. I add some pepper, add that to the flour, a couple teaspoons probably, whatever you're comfortable with. I like the beef to speak for itself. Some sea salt, and just a sprinkling of cayenne pepper just for a little bit of a kick. Once you're ready with the dredging flour, all seasoned and beautiful, we're gonna turn this frying pan up to a very high heat, to like a medium high heat, okay? You want that to really sear all of the juices and deliciousness into your roast. You want that to brown, and then we're gonna finish it in the oven on a lower heat, okay? So this is really to, to get a nice crust on there, get it nice and browned, and to get the cooking started. All right. My frying pan is very preheated. You can tell it's very hot. You will also see on your roast that you have one side with quite a bit of fat compared to the other sides. That's the side that you want on top once you hit that in the oven. Okay, so that's going to render the fat, keep the beef beautifully juicy and moist, and uh, it's also going to lend a lot of flavor. So you want that to end up on the top, okay? That being said, let's go. Dredge this up, make sure it's completely coated with flour and the seasonings. Oh, this is gonna be beautiful. Get all those nooks and crannies coated. This is what's gonna help brown things up. Now I feel sorry for people during the holidays that have these gluten problems because everything over the holidays 
has flour, whether it's your baking, your baked goods, or you know, simply just like this, a, a roast that's coated in flour. So some people have serious issues with it and they can't even have that, okay? So try and think of them if you're inviting them over. <laughs> Once you have that totally coated, what you wanna do is just kind of tap it. You don't want any excess flour because that's just going to make burnt bits, okay? You don't want burnt bits, you want brown bits not excess all right so tap that flour off you don't want any extra and let's get this into our hot hot frying pan let it go away from you when you put it in the pan so you don't have hot oil splashing on you now you're gonna see you have some probably excess flour you're gonna want to have to discard that so don't do it, use too much and have to waste it okay now I'm going to be baking a gorgeous gluten-free tiger nut Yorkshire pudding recipe today this flour instead of discarding it you could use that immediately for that that's going to be baked brought to a temperature so don't you don't have to waste it if you're going to make something that's savory that you're going to use that day okay just don't use it raw or don't reuse it again in future time like don't put it in the cupboard in a container you don't want to do that that has to be discarded otherwise okay now this is browning I have some nice big tongs to be able to move this around key is here you don't want to break the crust off so you don't want to mess with your roast too much you want it to brown nicely leave it in one spot don't keep checking it a whole bunch of times once you think it's brown check underneath there gently flip it only when it's nice and browned. You don't want to keep flipping it and keep browning it all over and all over. One time on each side, okay? So we let it go for a little while, then check it. Messing with it too much with the tongs breaks off all that gorgeous crust that you just created. All right, I've turned it for the first time. That's what you're looking for, some nice browned color. All right, continue. You may have to hold it on some of the sides so it doesn't stand by itself. It only takes a couple minutes to brown per side. So hold it up there. Look at the beautiful job that Tiger Nuts Flour did at creating a gorgeous browned crust. That's exactly what you want, okay? So put this in the oven on 325, that's what I'm doing it at. You could put it up to 350 if you wanted to. It's roughly 20 minutes per pound. Mine's gonna take about an hour and a half to be done, okay? If you see that your roast is becoming too browned, you can cover it with a loose aluminum foil tent to make sure that it doesn't burn, okay? Mine has a gorgeous browned crust already, so I'm probably going to do that from the jump, all right? So make sure it's loose. You don't want it steaming in there. You want this to roast, okay? And it goes. Also, if you wanted to throw some vegetables in around the roast or underneath the roast, uh, feel free to do that. You could put some uh, potatoes, you could put sunchokes, you could put carrots and celery, sweet potato, whatever it is you like, right? All right, let's check this roast out. Loose aluminum foil tent, right? Beautiful brownness, it's still nice and crispy, dry crispy, right? Just what you want. Now, it's been about an hour and 20 minutes and I just want to make sure that all is well here. Let me show you this gorgeous roast. Now, that's what you want. Ooh, she looks beautiful. I do have some lovely pan drippings. That's just what we need for our Yorkshire puddings. And I'm going to do an internal test. Now, a medium rare is 145 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, they, you, you wanna try and bring the outsides up to 160, okay? So go on, take your thermometer, because you're not gonna know any other way. Put it right into the center. My goal here is to have well done on the outside, which some people want in the house, and medium rare on the inside, which some of us want in the house. That way you can slice off end pieces for those who like their beef a little more done. Now, I'm at 137. A few more minutes off. Um, once you get it to a temperature, it's going to raise about five more degrees as it's sitting and resting. So I want to bring this up to at least 145 here for the center for medium rare, and uh, it shall increase in temperature while it's resting, okay? So I think I'll put her back in for maybe another 10 minutes or so, and uh, everything should be fine. Back in. Now, if it's not browned enough for your liking at this point, you're gonna wanna uncover it and let it finish roasting uncovered. Okay, this roast should be done like dinner. 
Let's check. I'm looking for a medium rare again in the center. Try and put that right through the same hole so you're not making a bunch of um, holes in here. Okay, we're at 145 through the center and that's exactly what we want. So, what you need to do now is let this baby rest, okay? If you start trying to cut into this right now, all the juices are ferocious. They're gonna be spewing out. You're gonna be so mad, you're gonna have very dry meat that's got loose, that's lost all that flavor, okay, as well. That's where the flavor is in the juice. So, we're going to cover this up. We're gonna let it just kinda hang out for a little while, maybe 10 minutes or so before you even wanna think about slicing it, okay? Now, these gorgeous drippings in the bottom, which I can't actually pour out to show you right now, um, they're gonna be used for our Yorkshire pudding. Lovely. Or you could use that for a beautiful gravy. Make sure you check out our gravy recipes. Uh, we have a ton of them for you to look at, okay? So let it rest, let it rest, let it rest, and you'll see me in just a little while. My roast has been resting lovingly. It smells absolutely divine. Let's get this here so we can cut this open. You can take a look at what's going on here. I've used the drippings for our fantastic gluten-free Tiger Nuts Yorkshire pudding. Check out that show. As well as our side dish of green beans with toasted Tiger Nuts. Awesome. And we did a beautiful nut-free Tiger Nuts Christmas thumbprint cookies. They are awesome absolutely delicious. So this is a tiger nut festivity. So let's, how about you take a look at this guy first and go. There she is, all crusted up, gorgeous and beautiful. Yum. And I'm gonna start slicing from one end. Again, the ends are gonna be uh, more cooked, obviously, than the center. So hopefully we have a couple different varieties of meat to give people different doneness. That is gorgeous. Mom and I are going to be eating the more rare portions. So let me get in here, get some nice slices going. We have some nice pink meat here. It's beautiful. It's juicy. We have a nice crust on it. Take a look at that. You have moisture. It hasn't run all out. Okay. It's still in there and you have a beautiful crust going on here. This is the best of both worlds. This is what happens when you rest the meat properly. It doesn't just all run out all that liquid, okay? So you could bring this to the table just like this and slice, you know, at the table, or you can prepare people's uh, plates to begin with. But this is a lovely presentation, if I don't say so myself. Mommy, would you like a piece? Absolutely. I want you to tell me what you think. Mm -hmm. this beautiful piece. I would be happy with that. Well, the center is definitely medium rare, just like we wanted. The ends are much more well done. Oh boy. Is that good, Mom? Mm. That's so wonderful, Kim. Yeah? Perfect. Mm. What do you think of that crust, Mommy? I love it. That's tiger nut crust. It's got all the juices in. That's the pink piece of meat is just so tender. Oh, not that your mouth. Browned crust, beautiful mm -hmm. medium rare meat. Let's have a bite. Mmm. Mm. That is out of this world. It's so good. Mmm. God, it's so good. Delicious. The meat is moist. It's beautiful. It is juicy, so juicy. That slight sweetness from the tiger nut crust is absolutely phenomenal with this beef. Mm. Beautiful, gluten-free, mm. wonderful alternative for the holidays or any day you're doing a roasted beef. Mm. Fantastic, hands down, fantastic. Mm. So tender and delicious, juicy. I don't want to stop eating. Mmm. <laughs> Absolutely melts in your mouth. The tiger nut oil helped us brown this all up. 
gave us some nice drippings for our beautiful Yorkshire puddings as well as helping us brown the meat and the the crust on this roast is phenomenal thanks to Tiger Nuts flour make sure you check out TigerNutsUSA.com for their flour and all their amazing products you're gonna love them what a fabulous way to switch up the holidays and help include people that have dietary restrictions ie this is nut free this is gluten free it's phenomenal you're gonna love it and it made a beautiful crispy brown crunchy crust that's delicious too all right that's it follow me on twitter at cooking with kim e with a capital e like the fan page at facebook.com slash cooking with kimberly check me out on instagram.com slash web chef of all trades come find my shows online on youtube.com slash cooking with kimberly and my website is cooking with kimberly.com interact with us and subscribe be a champion in your kitchen and eat deliciously yummy bye